Okay, welcome back. This is the third video in this series of videos describing how to use the ANSYS Finite Elements software package um, to just develop a simple model um, that describes the elongation uh, of a PASCO um, sample coupon uh, represented, uh, at least in the model here, um, by just a rectangular shape made out of metal. Um, so recall, uh, we did our hand calculation so that we have something to verify the model against. Um, went into static structural, um, selected static structural as my analysis system within static structural, used engineering data to find uh, an aluminum alloy similar to the alloy that the sample coupons that I'm modeling are made from, um, built up the geometry natively within ANSYS, so I've got two little check marks for data and geometry, uh, and now I'm ready to move on to model, step number four in the static structural analysis system. So uh, I'm going to double click on model, and um, recall I'm using a uh, pretty um, low powered laptop um, that is probably significantly slower than the computer that you are using, um, not purpose built for finite element analysis, but what um, is happening is ANSYS is opening the mechanical module and it's importing the geometry that I built uh, in, in the previous module. Uh, okay, so there it is. Uh, again, it's, it's a rectangle 80 millimeters long by four millimeters wide by 0 0.9 millimeters thick, representative of the PASCO sample coupons. Uh, now, before I get um, too far into um, the, the meshing and the solution here. Um, let me just describe uh, four functions that allow me to physically navigate uh, within the um, three-dimensional space represented on the two-dimensional screen um, of my computer. Um, so I'm going to use these four functions, box zoom, zoom, pan, and rotate, and I'll just show you briefly what each one of them does. So um, box zoom, um, based on its description, uh, hopefully should be intuitive. I'll click on this guy, come down here, hover within the ANSYS workspace. If I click and hold my mouse and then drag, um, I generate a box, and that box tells ANSYS where um, I would like to zoom in to get a closer look. So if I let go of the mouse, you can see oh, there, I zoomed in onto that edge of my model. Um, the next one is the zoom feature. So if I click on zoom, uh, this allows me to zoom in and out. So if I work, uh, bring my um, mouse into the ANSYS workspace here um, and click the button, uh, and I can then move my mouse out and in and out and in, and it shows you I'm essentially zooming in and zooming out and zooming in and zooming out. Um, I can also, by the way, um, if you happen to be using a mouse with a rollerball, um, I can use the, the rollerball feature. So I'm going to click here on um, box zoom just so you know I'm not, not cheating. Um, and I'm going to just use the rollerball to zoom in and zoom out and zoom in. So that's just the mouse rollerball, so it's, it's no different um, than the zoom function. Um, if I want to um, move around in three-dimensional space, I can click on pan. So here um, I hover in this screen, I click the mouse button and I'm able to move my model left, uh, right, up, down, and so forth. So long as I keep the mouse button depressed, uh, I can move this thing around as much as I like. Uh, and then as soon as I let go of the mouse button, um, I can move the mouse and not move the model. So that's how that guy works. Um, let me uh, use the, the mouse uh, track key, uh, trackball to pen and scroll outwards. Okay, um, the last one of these is called rotate. Um, so if I click on rotate, come over here, um, hover at a spot, click the mouse button, hold it and move it. Now I can actually rotate my model around um, in three dimensions so that I can get to all those faces and facets and features that um, I wouldn't otherwise be able to access um, because they're hi <coughs> hidden. Uh, okay, so let me leave it there. So um, I've got, again, rotate, pan, zoom, and box zoom that allow me to navigate in this space. Um, so now that I've done that, um, I'm going to move into meshing my model. Now, um, a mesh um, is essentially just a, a series of um, kind of small components within the larger component that I'm trying to model. Uh, and what finite element will do is it will solve um, the governing equations. In this case, it's the, the mechanics equations. Um, 
inside each one of those little uh, mesh volumes, and then it'll try to match up the boundary conditions uh, between each of the, the mesh volumes. And once it has all the boundary conditions lined up so that they all agree with each other, it will report back that, that it has a solution. So that, um, at least qualitatively, um, is what, what ANSYS is doing. Um, so I need to um, impose a mesh here. Just let me pan in just a little bit more so you can see what's going on. Um, okay, so um, to create a mesh, um, I go over here to um, mesh within uh, the, this outline hierarchy, and uh, I'm just going to click on it once, and what comes up down here is a menu of all of the different mesh features. So um, ANSYS gives you a lot of control um, over how the mesh is created, um, its shape, uh, and so forth, uh, the size of the individual um, nodes. Um, I'm not going to mess with anything here, um, but I am going to just show you um, if I click under sizing, there is um, something called relevant center course. And if I click on course, um, I actually have three different options, coarse, medium, and fine. Now, like I said, I, I wasn't going to change anything, so I'm going to leave it on coarse, but this will become important later um, as we go to validate our model. Um, this allows you in kind of a general way to change the size of the mesh from a coarse mesh to a medium mesh to a fine mesh. I'm going to leave it on coarse, which should be good enough for our purposes, uh, but ultimately you guys will want to use this, and I'll show you later on, um, to validate um, the, the validity of your model. So, okay, um, haven't changed anything here in this menu, but I just opened it so that you could see um, what's there. Um, so now if I go back up to Mesh, I'm going to right click and uh, a couple of options appear. Um, I have not yet um, created a mesh, um, so I'm just going to generate one um, under Generate Mesh, just using the default features provided by ANSYS. So if I click on this, it'll take a moment Remember, my computer is slower than yours, and boop, out comes uh, the mesh. So this is sort of what was expected, right? So Antis just took um, that 80 millimeter long, 4 millimeter ride rectangular shape and just broke it up into a bunch of tinier rectangles, um, and that is uh, the mesh that I'm going to use. Um, so the next step... Um, is to um, impose some boundary conditions. So right now, um, if I look uh, here in my project menu within the hierarchy, um, you see analysis settings and there's a little check mark, uh, which seems to imply that um, the analysis settings, the boundary conditions um, have already been established. Uh, it's a little confusing because I haven't done anything yet, um, but when you think about it, um, there actually are a set of boundary conditions on this object. Uh, at the moment, I've imposed um, no forces on any of the external surfaces. Uh, it's literally just sort of floating there in space uh, with no gravity acting on it and no forces acting on it. And so in a way, um, the boundary conditions are, are actually set, even though I haven't done anything. Um, so that's kind of one way to, to think about why um, this little check mark appears here when initially, intuitively, you'd think it wouldn't. Um, of course, if I just leave it this way and I solve it, what I'll end up with is um, that there is no deformation because I haven't yet imposed a force on this simulation, so I need to do that. Um, so uh, I need to start imposing some, some boundary conditions, some forces. So um, let me um, turn here and zoom in. Whoops. Turn here and pan and zoom in. Um, this is the face that uh, I will be interested in imposing uh, a 100 newton force on. Recall 100 newtons is what we used in our hand calculation, pretty representative of what the PASCO stress strain apparatus would be able to do uh, in terms of force generation on a surface. Um, and um, looking at the time, um, I'm almost up to 10 minutes, so I'm going to stop the video here. Um, and we will pick it up again uh, in video number four, where I'll show you guys how to impose the boundary conditions and solve for the uh, elongation of this shape. Uh, okay, so see you in just a few moments for video number four. Thanks.